guys, welcome back to my channel. This is Serial Gaming here, and today we're going through the upcoming featured LD banner, which is gonna feature the return of Walker's LD and his Crystal Level 90, as well as his rework, as well as Alpha Knot's rework and his Crystal Level 90 and his new LD. So starting off with Walker, Walker doesn't get too big of a rework outside having more HP dump. He does get a little bit of upgrade on his skill 1. His skill 1 now is a 3 single target HP attack with 50% splash, as well as inflicting their debuff blind to all enemies instead of just the target enemies. So this is actually pretty nice. Walker doesn't have this AoE blind previously, which is really bad all things considered. Granted, the blind is not a 100% hit rate down, so it is still a little bit RNG reliance, but Wakas is always all about RNG, his LD and everything. So I guess adding up this additional uh, protective measure is actually a really good upgrade to his kit. But other than that, his skill 2 only get 3 uh, single target HP attacks, so just a little bit more HP dumps. His LD as well get 4 full AoE HP attack and add up a 10% HP damage resist now debuff on all of his status reel. Regardless of whichever the status rule is applied, his EX with the Crystal 1190 upgrade does a 4 split AoE HP attack and now provides himself and the party a 20% HP damage up and 40% Brave damage up. Of course, he also provides more party initial bravery up as well as giving more bravery regen to the entire party at the start of their turn. His additional ability now grants the party 20% attack up, 20% brave damage cap up, as well as 10% max bravery and overflow up. So Waka, it's like a semi aura bot with debuff capability, which help cripples the enemy to prevent them from uh, ever hitting the party too hard and everything. His status reel does decrease the enemy and it's quite relevant during the uh, initial release of his LD, but right now, Honestly, status is just not as important in this era and in the upcoming Shinyu era right now, considering the status of the enemy is just too huge to have an impact on this small changes of their status itself. So I won't be saying that Waka's debuff is going to be very relevant. The freeze debuff and everything could be nice, but would you really want to rely on RNG for that one when you have stronger capabilities such as Cater for the freeze itself? So I would say Waka is, he definitely needs a little bit more tweaking in his kit to actually make him more reliable and more relevant to the party in this era. Personally, Waka isn't even that relevant when he was released during his LD debut. And I think that he's going to be a lot less reliable and relevant in this current release of his uh, Crystal 1190. So we definitely want to see what kind of upgrade he will get during the FR era. I just don't think it's justifiable for him to be in a party unless you just want to have some fun in the RNG that he applied. So if you're going to run him in the party, you might just want to be careful not to overload the enemy with debuff so though that he can land his blind debuff properly since it's not framed. Uh, other than that, he's just... He's quite flexible, honestly, because of how he crippled the enemy and everything, just like Yuffie itself. So he doesn't really have a very uh, strong counter character that just goes really bad against him or strong bad compatibility. But overall, there's just a lot more reliable characters to substitute what his utility is. So I just don't think that he'll be good to any of you in the part being in the party itself. So moving on from Walker, we have Alpha Nod with a big fat rework. I mean, it's quite overdue considering the fact that he was last being relevant during the late chaos era alpha Knot now does have more batteries and now of course heal the entire party which is nice in his skill one and also extend the white overhead buff to six turn when using this skill his skill two now does a three single target hp attack with 50 percent splash and his ex uh, with the Crystal 1190 upgrade now is a instant turn skill which does 4 split AoE HP attack and extend his black overhead buff to 8 turns so it makes it really hard to fall off unlike before it also improves his bravery and HP attack when his EV, uh, EX overhead is active his bravery attack now does a 2 full AoE HP attack which previously was split so this was pretty nice 
His HP attack now does a 3 single target HP attack with 50% splash as well. So pretty nice as well. It also provides a 1 free skill on the next turn for those, those who never used Alpha Knot before. His additional ability with the Crystal 11 ID upgrade now gave the party a 80% initial bravery, bravery regen as well as a 30% initial bravery up and 10% brave gain up to the entire party. Not entirely too relevant or too good for this additional ability but it does help with the brave gain up considering that he doesn't have that buff in any of his auras. His LD now does a 4 single target HP attack with 50% splash on each HP attack. It also grants him a LD buff which lasts for 12 turns. With this LD buff active, the party cannot be broken and it now provides a 20% party overflow, brave damage and HP damage up. His LD also lands a debuff to the entire enemy for 6 turns which now does a 20% brave damage resist down and a HP poison on the enemy for every few action based on 150% of Alpha Knot's own attack. So this LD is actually really interesting. First of all, the LD buff which allows Alphanaut to become unbreakable is actually really good with his kit. If you recall, Alphanaut previously has a problem where if he's broken, he will lose that EX or that uh, skill 1 overhead buff regardless if it's white or black color. So with that in mind, you want to always run Alphanaut with a tank so you can avoid him getting hit by the enemy itself. But since he's a healer, you normally would say that he doesn't actually require a tank if he doesn't have this crippling utility. So this LD buff actually resolved that issue. Elfinor now doesn't need any tank to help him absorb that uh, bravery attack. And thus his EX overhead buff can never go off unless he's used his skill 1 of course. Since like I mentioned, with the extension of his EX buff, it now allowed more longevity of his EX buff so that Alphinaut can just go to throughout the entire stage with his EX overhead buff active. The 20% additional stats from the LD buff is just a very good add up to the aura that Alphinaut already provides. The LD debuff actually also provides a very, I would say niche utility to Alphinaut. The HP poison that lands every few action is actually similar to uh, X death BT effect. So Alphanaut is very flexible in that situation. With his LD buff, he can go very, really well with counter unit since the party cannot be broken. You don't have to worry about the enemy getting turns. And his LD debuff actually pairs really well with turn hoggers since they can abuse that HP poison with their constant turn hogging. So Alphanaut, like I said, it's very flexible for him to run with units now given that his utility is all over the place. But then again, that itself is a problem for the entire kit for Elfenaut. He's like Irvine, a jack of all trade, but master of none. He deals very decent damage. He helps protect the entire party. He has a LD debuff, which poison the enemy like Dankred, regardless of bravery and HP poison. He also has healing capability. So like I said, jack of all trade, but really master of none because he doesn't really excel in any of this utility. Like for example, if you want to go protective in full force, you might even want to run Tang as a better alternative than Alphanon himself. Or if you want a better healing capability hero, uh, character, you might want to go for uh, example like Maria instead of Alphanon since Maria also protects the party from the enemy's attack as well as giving the party that healing capability. But the damage from Maria is just not as much from Alfie instead. So Alfie, like I mentioned before, it's a mixture of everything, but he doesn't really do very excel in one particular situation. This, in this uh, Crystal 11 ID era, just get the short end of the stick when a character just suffer from doing too much, but while at the same time doing too little at the utility that they have. So Alphanaut for me is just very easily replaceable by a lot of characters if you want to run him at a specific role, but he does help in giving more flexibility, especially if his kit does maintain the orb of a certain Lufania plus stage. Regardless whether you're not pulling or if you're pulling for Alfie itself, I personally think that both Alfie and Walker is just less relevant as compared to what was released before them 
and especially when what was released uh, what is going to release after them is also going to be really good Cisne, Snow and Raijin are some of the best LD character we will be getting post Crystal Level 90 era and I'll be discussing that in a later video but do know that if you want to save your resources I do recommend skipping this banner I personally gonna throw some tickets on Alphanaut just because of the fact that he helps a lot during the late Chaos era for my team especially running him with uh, Arciella as well as Arfmau the AAA team is just really fun before so like Shalota, I think that regardless of whether his LD is good or bad, he just deserves a spot in this uh, current roster. So I'll be throwing some tickets for him, but I hopefully would get him in, in an amount where I could be comfortable at. I just don't want to throw too much, especially I, when I want all those that comes after him. But anyway, that's my plan for now. I just don't give two shits about Waka. I never like using him. I never like his character as well. So I think, yeah, I know, I'm just not going to go for him or even max him. He's just going to stay in the bench, which he was supposed to be when he was playing Blitzball. Anyway, guys, thank you guys again for watching. If you like my video, consider clicking that subscribe button and like the video. It does help with the, the channel. And let me know what you guys think about these two characters down in the comments below, whether or not you're pulling for them. Alright, so guys, I'll see you guys in the next video. Cheers.